So we've made it to Croton Dam. David Glenn is behind me, not looking at the camera. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a view of what we're looking at, show you my setup, and we'll go from there. I have set up for my shot with my new tripod, which I'm sporting. This is the Saray ST125. David has the other tripod. He doesn't have it with him right now, but he has the ST124. I love it. <laughs> he said he loves this, the tripod. He more so loved the ball head though. Ball head. Exactly, exactly. This one is the more compact one. I love it for that, even though it's a five section tripod. I'm okay with that. No, you got the four section. I love it because on the bottom, which you all can't see, the feet actually have the hooks that come out. So you just twist the, the bottom of them. And then something different from my other tripod to this one is that I have a built-in center column. This is the Zeiss Otis. This is the 28 millimeter 1.4 lens. You'll see that that is the, it's a very dark filter. This is the breakthrough filter, 10 stop ND. And then of course, the brand new Sony Alpha 1. Freaking awesome, freaking awesome camera. Really love it. This is our view that we have. Nice cloud day. I'm capturing this if I spin that back around. Well, here's the back of my camera with my settings. Right now I'm on a two second timer. Of course, this is a manual focusing lens. I'm in manual focus. The, the shutter speed is fluctuating just because the sun will go behind the clouds and it comes from behind the clouds. That's fluctuating from right now 3.2 seconds and sometimes it's gotten up to 13 seconds. I'm at an aperture of F10. I'm underexposing for this and here's why. If you look at this right now, the middle of this is a hot spot. The rest of the dam, not so much. Like it's very even, perfect, but because there's so much water there, and then the sun, when, once it comes out, it brightens that little area there up quite a bit. Well, I have to dial that down because I don't want that to be overexposed because then I can't do anything with it. And if we look out here, it's a very bright day and there's, there's some clouds coming in, but we got a while before they reach the sun and kind of cover that up a bit. That's why I'm underexposing for that specific purpose. So my ISO is on 80. Auto white balance, dynamic range level three, standard creative style profile. No picture profiles are on, multi metering. And that's essentially it. I don't know if there's anything else that I'm missing that you all might want to know, but those are my settings. Okay, so I'm getting ready to take a shot now. So I have the two second timer. I do have my remote, but the reason I'm not using it is because I'm not longer than 30 seconds, so it's not necessary. Just use the two second timer, does the same thing. Earlier, I was trying to find a composition that was back here to get that, but there wasn't a good vantage point. So I ended up coming up, up a little closer. So you kind of see how close I am right now. Like if I step back there, that's my setup. I'm shooting with the 28. It actually works out very well here for, for this, this specific composition. What I want is I do want the bridge that's up there. I want the whole dam, but I'm not getting, I don't think I'm really getting that part over there. There were, you know, there's still clouds back there behind the bridge, but I want this sort of cloud pattern that's coming in to fall right there because that just fills in that, that blank area. Now here's something important to know about photographing waterfalls. You don't always have to go ultra long on your exposures. And this is one of those instances. Because this is a very powerful waterfall as it is, just doing a couple seconds will get the exposure super nice. Let's go back up to ISO 100. We're only at 2.5 seconds, but watch what happens. I'm gonna take that shot and then look at that so much drag that's in that and it's just two and a half seconds so you don't have to do a lot when the water is very powerful you base it off of the specific waterfall itself so that's why there's no really sort of go-to in terms of photographing waterfalls it's dependent on what you're photographing here's the view of the whole thing it's a nice little area very nice see the sun is gone now i'm at 10 seconds so just that quick that little bit of filter Gave me a 10 second, now it's at eight because the sun is coming in a little bit hot again. So we're gonna take that and that's gorgeous, beautiful shot. Now I've recomposed the shot and now I'm getting vertical orientation. So why is it that I do that? Number one, 
I use the horizontal for the website. Any images that I might be selling, or you know, if I need to put an image up on my website and want to use it as a banner or something, I always want to have the horizontal for that. Now, in terms of posting to Instagram, the vertical ones, I just like to post those on, on social media. Not always do I offer those for sale. Some, some images I do have that way, if I only have that orientation. But that's kind of why I like to capture both, because I have different uses for them. I don't think you have enough stuff. That's the other tripod. Show us the tripod. Huh? So this is, as he puts it down, I wanted him to show the tripod. Oh. So this is the other one. This is, this is the ST124. So this is the sort of larger one of that one. As you can see, when it's closed up, it's a little bit taller than the one that I have. But the real showstopper is this, the ball head. This is a Colorado Tripod Company ball head. And we both love this. He's stolen it from me. Cause I'll be getting another one. Yeah, we're 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 gonna we're gonna have to keep this around because what makes this so awesome when you put the camera on here, it's just this clamp. That's it. And it's locked. If you push that button and flip it back, then it unlocks. So much easier than the tripods where you the ball heads where you have to screw it on. I never feel comfortable and safe with those. So this is welcome. These are the two tripods. Great tripods, carbon fiber. This is the fourth section and it's a waterproof system. That part at the bottom is the most essential for what we do, waterproof. Because we do put our tripods in a lot of water. You want to have a, a good tripod that can withstand that, but we do take care of them. It's good to, you know, clean them every so often, make sure there's no gunk or dirt in them. Look here, just with this folded, you see the first leg section of this? It's a little bit longer when it's in the closed position. It just sits a little taller on the side of my bag than that one. So that's why I chose that one over this one. But I am keeping both though, because they are still great. I don't remember if I talked about this or not, but I'm sure I'll see it if I go back through the footage. But I don't have an L bracket because the camera's so new. That is why I have it the way that it is. I don't know where Dave went. Just that fast, I don't know if he went on the bridge, which is behind me, or what, but yeah. I don't know if we're still going to the top of that bridge there. Look at those clouds though, isn't that gorgeous? But yeah, that's pretty much all that there is. Oh, let's see how this, this frame came out, because I forgot, I forgot to show you that. Isn't that gorgeous? Wow. That's beautiful. Okay, so we're packing up everything. Oh, he's got it covered already. Oh, sorry. All of our gear is tucked away nicely. And then this is where I normally sit. And that's what Dave does. Nothing. Wait, I'm driving. What are you talking about? <laughs> Here, that's the one. Oh, this is uh, Dave's step stool because, you know, his ground clearance is very low. <laughs> Very high. I didn't need one of those. <laughs> and now we're leaving Croton Dam. You could say Croton on film. Oh, race work. <laughs> I hate you because I'd have on my seat belt. <laughs> you are a very evil, evil man. And then we got Dave Earnhardt Glenn here. 